Welcome back to the Comic Book Bullies with Nerdist New Bully and host Leroy, a.k.a. Sidewinder, uh, with my co-host. Yeah, this is Eli, a.k.a. Almond Joy. Yes, that is a perfect point name. <laughs> <laughs> and we are back with another episode. And for the first time, Eli, it feels like it's just a, in 2020, it's, I don't know, I don't know if it's getting normal, but 2020 is getting so out of control. It's just like, even when you see weird shit, it's just normal now. Like, that's, that. That's this is the new normal. This is the new normal. Stay for Mark Miller, Marshmallow Man walking down the street. Whatever. Okay, it's Tuesday. You know. Uh, but before we get into it, we do. There was a death this weekend, and for a lot of people, don't know who this is. You do know who this is. That's the thing, e e Eli. Even you know who this is. I guess and I do. You, told you me do. I do. We, we all do. We all do know. We want to say rest in peace to Dame Diana Rigg. That's what I'm talking about. And for a lot of you, that's not me. You know her as. That old lady from Game of Thrones. <laughs> I don't, uh, now, Eli, before I go into it, can you break that? Because I don't watch Game of Thrones. Everybody says it's the greatest thing to slice bread. I only caught on to the last season. And I was like, this it? Okay. So you got you to gotta break this down for me. Yeah, she was on Game of Thrones. Cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's, let's break down what, it what else you joint, Dude, it was a big fat joint. We smoked it. You missed it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, late to the party. I'm, I'm the guy that comes to the party after it's all over this shit. Like that. <laughs> Did I miss the orgy? Yes. <laughs> oh, shit. So anyway, the big thing about Diana Rigg, for those that don't know, is that she was uh, popular on this TV show called The Avengers. She played yeah. Emma Peel. And Emma Peel, if you notice, look at her costume, you may think her costume was kind of familiar. Now, this costume was on The Avengers, and there was an, a remake of the movie, what, a TV show adaptation in, what, 1998? Yeah. With uh, Uma Thurman, take let's take a second for Uma Thurman, 90s Uma Thurman, yes, yeah. okay. Now, you notice the similarities between those two costumes. If you notice, it also looks similar to Boom Black Widow, because yes, Black Widow is a complete ripoff of Emma Peel, that's exactly where she came from. Uh, they even say it like his thing when Black Widow was first made in the comics, I don't have a picture of it right now, she was actually kind of like a ripoff of Spider, she's actually like the first Spider Woman. She crawled up walls. She swung on webs, shit like that. But it wasn't like she got bit by a spider. She just had spy shit. Spider Man saw her, actually beat her ass, said, "Quit stealing my shit." That's when she started dressing like him appeal. And boom, that's the you know Black Widow that we all know and love and shit like that. You know, I started get like a whole bunch of Black Widow cosplayers and shit like that. But I was running low for time, so I was like, "Fuck it." Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's what took you so long. Huh? That's what took me so long, like. Research purposes. <laughs> uh, but wait, there's more. Not only was she the Black Widow, she was also, and his name, we don't talk about James Bond enough on this podcast, but uh, we're going to correct that sooner or later. But she was also Tracy Bond on the fifth James Bond movie, Her Majesty's Secret Service. So yes, James Bond got married in one of those fucking movies. But here's the thing. At the very end of the movie, after he beat the bad guy shit like that, he got married uh to tracy she became tracy bond and then right before the credits roll specter you know the evil organization that james bond fights in all these movies did a drive-by shot her and killed her roll Ooh. credits the end <laughs> so pretty much and that's not uh people keep saying like james bond is like another dude in another movie no he's not because in that movie she got shot that was it the next movie another dude played james bond was looking for the dude to kill his wife so they're all playing the same guy. It's just like Batman with Bruce Wayne. It's like like another Bruce Wayne playing Batman. James Bond is James Bond is James Bond. So that's the legacy that Diana Rigg did with it. Now, somebody also said that she might be inspiration for the Hellfire Club with the X-Men. I don't oh, I don't know anything about that, but they said she might have been a, like the whole Black Queen, Black King, all that shit. She they did that shit on the Avengers TV show, not the one we know, the one that one. So yeah, rest in peace to uh, Dame Diana Rigg. She was, every, for everybody else knows her as that Game of Thrones lady. She did more shit than that. Uh, can, can we get on to the crazy 2020 shit now? Sure. Okay, so crazy 2020 shit going on right now is that uh, we are in the middle of actual Blade Runner, I guess. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so weird shit going on right now. I should have got that shit, but I didn't get it. Fuck it, we just gonna go. I don't want to leave Dame Judy Ditch. I fucked the name of Dinner. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh fuck it. But anyway, what's going on right now? We got this crazy ass Blade Runner shit going on right now where uh California is burning. California again, is on again. But it's like really bad this time. Yeah. 
And how it got started is actually like pretty fucking crazy. Uh, Eli, do you know the story of how it got started? I did hear about it. Okay. So apparently it got started from a gender reveal party. That's that's the that's why this thing is going nuts like like no more gender reveal parties. That's how the shit going crazy. Because when they had the gender reveal party, apparently the guy brought like fireworks and pyrotechnics and shit like that to reveal the gender of the baby. And apparently it set off a fire that burned down pretty much all of Southern California. Yeah. You know. So that's why, you know, it looks like uh Terminator 2 in 1997 in that movie where it just looked like apocalyptic. Now, this looks like the apocalyptic future that 2020 promised us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Be- because this is what San Francisco looks like now. Yeah, I have family out west, and yeah, it's it's pretty much just like that, they said. Yeah, it's yeah. like that, so that's expected. And this is the movie Blade Runner 2024, <laughs> or 2049, whatever the Ryan Gosling 20, movie. 2049, yeah. That shit, yeah. So you can't tell the difference. <laughs> yeah. We're here, we're there, we're post-apocalyptic. We take finally, now where are the fucking zombies? Just want to know. So, they're on facebook wait, <laughs> they're on facebook <laughs> but wait eli it gets worse because oh, not great. only are we in apocalypse 2020 apparently there is oh shit i'm too big fuck okay oh apparently, another, another fire nato <laughs> i've never heard what you've heard this before yeah remember it was like a few weeks ago there was one it was like the weather the weather uh the weather service issued out the very first fire nato warning this is like last month from force it's too much <laughs> shit happening right now man i can't keep up with all this shit this is another one i take it <laughs> this is another one this is one likes going like live now because you know southern california is like burning to the ground so yes fire nados are popping up now yeah. why is this not a movie i don't know or like a song a metal band writes you know yeah fire, it need- NATO, coming across the ground <laughs> fire nato Burning up the town. Fire. Uh, Eli, you could be a rich man right now. You can write that shit now. <laughs> you heard it here first on the Comic Book Podcast. <laughs> oh, shit. So what else we got? Yeah, that's... uh Okay, can we get into the shit now? The shit, yeah. The shit. Knee deep into the shit. We're going to talk about, mm-hmm. boom, Lovecraft Country. Now, we've been, oh. we've been slacking on our Lovecraft Country you know, reviews lately. It's just been a lot of shit going on. We can't even keep up with it like we want to. But yeah, we have to get into it. And Eli, I'm going to let you start because I know you wanted to talk about not this episode. Well, you didn't want to talk about this episode, but it's something happened on the last episode. Oh, yeah, this episode. episode was, yeah, was nuts. <laughs> yeah, this was, uh, I was like, what the fuck the whole time it was. But I, I'm going to let you address like the, it the takes, shit from It takes a lot to make me like wince. <laughs> yeah, that this this episode was assault on my senses, basically. <laughs> All right. Well, last week's episode, what was it called? The History of Violence, episode four, is yeah. basically an Indiana Jones adventure, um, and w- with a little bit of the Goonies thrown in because they find a pirate ship at the end, right. full of full of dead natives. Like I thought this was oh. I didn't catch that. <laughs> I didn't catch that. Okay. And I got a little bit of bone to pick with with the uh, with with the whole native representation uh, on the show. Um, so yeah, they they find these dead natives from like the Caribbean, and was it that one guy was trying to get the one woman to translate the book or something and then he ends up killing the son them of Adam. All. yeah uh-huh. yeah um and then her ghost she somehow comes back to life and uh and says all this shit but and they never then, explain how they just say she just yeah she, just she comes did. back to life and um and yeah and then they end up killing her <laughs> <laughs> they punch her first. Somebody punches her. And, right. I mean, because she was like crazy and then they were like slapping her back to the senses or something. I don't know. Yeah. And then they kill her. Dude ends up like just cutting her throat in the end. Um, so here's the thing. There's, you know, you know, everyone knows. Well, for those who don't know, I am native. I'm not Mexican. I am native and Italian. <laughs> That's where the facial hair comes from. <laughs> I, I don't speak Spanish. They try to. They, they think I do. I don't. So I'm Native American. Um. There's barely ever any native representation in the media or pop culture in movies or anywhere. Mm-hmm. So when there is a native on screen, Indian country takes notice. It's like news. It makes the news. Like literally, 
on, on Facebook, on Twitter, hey, there's an Indian on TV. Like we all like, you know, <laughs> like, uh, you know, sound the beacons. There's an Indian. <laughs> now, did you know you're never going to be Native Americans on the show before you watched it? Or it just, just no, came out No, I, I was just watching and I was like, oh, shit, please don't be Native. Please be like Egyptian or something else. Ain't they from Africa too? Like, please be another. Right. Don't be Caribbean native. something. Yeah, you know. I was like, please don't. But, Rastafari but, and anything, you know. I was like, because the thing with it's always stereotypical imagery. We are we're all Native Americans are always portrayed as like these ancient relics of the past. We're you know we're never portrayed in contemporary times or the modern world. We're always in leather and feathers and buckskin right. and just these you know prehistoric cavemen and right. that's like even a show in the past you were displayed even past that yeah we were even more <laughs> ancient you know right. <laughs> you know because there she was you know not speaking english had all this war paint shit on her face and it was just like they just went for the same old stereotype the same old shit you know so i guess um it's a little disappointing for a show that, you know, that's been preaching inclusion and, and, and diversity and the importance of, you know, telling the history and stories of marginalized people. And then just to have them just use native stereotypes. You right. Know? Just go um, shorthand. They're basically being accused of the same things that everybody accused them of, you know, yeah. that they're accusing other people of. Right. And I'm not even, and I'm just talking about the native, you know, the native representation. I'm not even going into the trans or the gay representation because she well, well, that, to, that's that's this episode. That's yeah, that I'm not going because this this native woman turned out she was trans or two spirit. Well, and, well, I, okay, I missed all that shit, man. <laughs> yeah, she was trans. No, she had a dick. I don't know if she, um, you know, I don't know, I don't know if that this actress was actual a trans actress, but if not, they could have the hell was I watching. Yeah, you, you miss you, you missed the digital penis or the prosthetic penis. Yeah, I didn't see any yeah. of that. Like, and she was two spirited, which you know, in native culture, that means from the gay community. Um, now the the term two spirited didn't come, wasn't like invented to like the nineties. So this is like pre. They're sort of jumping the gun, anyways, because she was two spirited or gay she was able to translate the book or something because she had the woman uh power or whatever Basically, but only a man making, can do it or something yeah yeah and they're, they're making gay people into these magical beings or whatever so i'm not even i'm not even gonna go there i'm I, you know i mean but we got to we got I'm, to I'm, I'm sure there's outrage about that there is outrage about that because but i'm i'm i don't feel like i have enough info right. to be an advocate for the gay community. Well, I, I, I feel saying. like we're gonna after this episode, it's because you're gonna it's gonna be loud. Yeah. Basically. Um. But but yeah, I just felt like they were generalizing native culture again. They're just use oh, this is two spirit. They have some sort of magical abilities. Therefore, it serves this fantastical plot device. And again, just generalizing native culture, generalizing native you know heritage, kind of like the same way the New Mutants did. You know. Right. So again, like I said, it's just a little disappointing that the show that preaches diversity and representation just in the end use the same old native stereotypes. Um, so yeah, that that's that's I just had a bone to pick. And no, I'm not I mean there is outrage over this. I'm more lenient. I'm I'm nice about it. I'm probably they'll probably call me a sellout for not being <laughs> as angry as other natives are but there is a lot of outrage <laughs> over this um but i'm you know how i feel i'm not canceling shit i don't cancel nothing i'm not boycotting shit i'm just criticizing you know all art is subject for critique and that's all i'm doing just giving you giving y'all a heads up giving them a little right you, you know, you're not triggered you know, anything like that yeah so. do better do better hire right. some native writers you know what i'm saying to the you know to the makers of lovecraft lovecraft country you know do better, you know. You fucked up. Come correct next time. That's all. Right. You know, learn. So, that's all. That's a, that, that's, that's a all teachable, we're asking. For. Yeah, it's a teachable moment. So that's what I'm. <laughs> I right. can't. Get, I can't get mad at anyone who doesn't know shit about native culture. But before you try to, you know, use it or write about it or appropriate it, learn about it first. You know. You know, and then, 
like I said, like the whole two spirited thing in native in native heritage. Yes, the gay community had a role in native traditions. They had mm -hmm. responsibilities and certain things expected of them. So to just sort of generalize it, oh, they they have these magical abilities. So here they can, you know, do some magic shit that propels our story. You know, right. and because they plan, almost yeah. they almost doing what H. P. Lovecraft was doing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. They, they they saying they're trying to flip it and try to do something different with H.P. Lovecraft doing, but no, you're just doing exactly what he did. Yeah, so that's all. I was I was a little disappointed. I, I just like, oh no, like I said, when I saw the na I saw the all the dead bodies, I was like, oh please don't be native, be somebody <laughs> else, any other minority. Don't don't try to represent <laughs> us now. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I was I, like I said, I was just a little little disappointed. So. Oh man. So can we talk about this episode? Oh yeah, <laughs> this I'm like, what the fuck, man? You know what, Eli? I, somebody spoiled the the whole ending for me. Okay, not even ending that whole platform because the first thing Lovecraft Country is based on a a book, a novel, something like that. So I, I screwed around, listened to a podcast, and actually explained in the book, like this, basically this episode was in the book. You know, so okay. everything they explained about now spoiler, I don't know what happened. Basically, uh, Liddy's sister, who is black on the show, she gets a potion. It turns to a white woman and mm -hmm. they basically like in the book she basically gets addicted to that potion you like she at first she's like i'm gonna just try it a couple times here and there and then, then more she do it the more she just wants to be just white the whole time i think they flip it in the in this in this in the episode where she actually doesn't get addicted to be a white woman she actually hates being a white woman yeah once they find out how well, all the fucked up shit that's going on. right she was like nah, i don't even want to do this shit. let's see what all we got right. here definitely agree but there's that yes yes we, we will get to, we'll get to that also oh uh, so and yeah, it's just so much crazy shit going on. That's one thing we're talking about. That uh can we talk about uh the dad? Yeah. Okay, let's talk about What's the dad. Name again? Just... Montrose or something? Mont Montrose. Mont Montrose. Montrose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now here's the thing. We we talking about Montrose, and it was supposed to be like this big shocker. But the thing is, if you ain't been paying attention to the whole series has been leaning up, this actually really isn't even a shocker. And now because... that I think of it, I think that's the reason why he killed the native chick. Cause she was gay, and he was trying to hide it. You think That's he was, because think. he was so homophobic? He was like maybe yeah, he was, right he, because he, he was he trying wasn't to hide. out yet. Yeah, he wasn't and out he was yet. Yeah, trying to hide, hide that side of him though. Because I think this episode was all about everyone's internal struggles and hiding and trying to portray something they're not. Right. You know what I mean, it was I a theme was with a theme. every character yeah. in here. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, and so it was. It was a thing with him. Um. Because the thing is, at the very first the pilot episode, like, okay, we find his boyfriend. Well, we find out that his boyfriend in the show. But the very first time we see that dude, he's getting dicks up by some random dude in the alley. That's the first time we see this guy. And then apparently that's supposed to be Montrose's good friend. So you'd be like, okay. So they're telling you right now. Uh, even in the last episode, the one we just talked about, the guy that Montrose talked to, the security guard, even then, he was saying that they might have been a little more friendly than what you think. So all the all the they was playing seeds the whole time. So when what happened happened, it shouldn't have been a shock. But there was some very you gotta listen to the soundtrack of these these episodes because the soundtrack tells you everything you need to know. Uh, Eli, how familiar are you with Frank Ocean? Frank Ocean, eh. yeah, R and B singer, probably not. Okay, eh. here's the thing: when the whole homosexual love scene happened, what in the background was playing was Frank Ocean. Now, Frank Ocean is an R&B singer that came out as gay. Okay. But he came out as gay on a song. <laughs> and the song that was playing is called Bad Religion. It was a song playing in the background of it. So the song is about, and that's the whole story behind the song. Uh, before I get into it, let me see. Is that, yeah, let's see what you got here. Great oh, job, guys. Thank you, Cam. Hey, what up, Cam? Cam, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely want to read the social commentary. Cam. Number of trans women who have been murdered for zero coverage. Yeah, it's, it's all there. Let me let me go back to uh Frank Ocean, what I was talking about. So Frank Ocean, the song is about now. Remember, taxi cab confession was a big thing back in whenever that shit was, early teens, late teens, whatever. He was doing a taxi cab confession the song. He was talking to this uh taxi cab driver named uh, Admiral Akbar. I'm sorry. Alu Akbar. <laughs> sorry, not as a trap. That guy. <laughs> <laughs> and basically he was confessing, he was saying, you know, Macy was making a song about unrequited love, like I'm in love, but I can't tell the person. And bird and Agbar is just telling him pray over it. He said, "How can I? This is something I can't pray over. It's a bad religion, you know." 
Uh, and the funny thing about it, you like you listen to the song and we didn't know at the time. Like we all listen to Frank Ocean. He's just making hits left, and right. Hits. Boom, 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 boom. Jay-Z song, Kanye song. You're like, I love me some Frank Ocean. Then he makes this song and you just jam it to it. And you start to listen to the lyrics. I can never make him love me. You're like him. Oh, wait, yeah, what? That song. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you yeah, listen, yeah. you're like, wait, I can't make who love who? He's gay. I'm listening to a gay song the whole time. What the fuck? So, you know, everybody flipped. Them. We didn't we didn't know how to handle it at the time. I think we overreacted a little bit because I think we didn't know what canceling was at the time. But I feel like Frank Ocean was canceled at the time, you know, because like I said, he made a gay song. We didn't know about it. That was him coming out to everybody, you know, in the music. Industry. And after that song, you didn't get too many more albums out of Frank. Ocean. He still makes some stuff here and there, but it wasn't like back to back hits like it was before because we didn't know how to how to act around it. So it's interesting. They had that song about Frank Ocean coming out with this scene with, uh, you know, Montrose coming out. Well, to us, at least, you know, so I just well, thought he didn't really a- come out. He was still resisting. He wouldn't even kiss the guy. And it wasn't until they had the, the where they go to that party, the dance. Right. Which I actually found very moving where he finally embraced who he was. And right. embraced that side of himself and, and allowed himself to, dancing, to be who he was. Out, you know? yeah. yeah. And then he kissed the guy, he kissed the boyfriend that he was fucking earlier, you know. Yep. You know, and I think that was like his uh like I said, embracing who he really is, embracing his true self, you know. Right. Because there's so much stuff he's hiding. That's one thing he's hiding, but it's all kind of stuff he's hiding on the show, also. So very interesting stuff. Oh uh, it was like the oh, first time you yeah. get to see him like he's not an asshole in that scene. <laughs> Right, because he's an asshole. He's, always, he's a fucking asshole. asshole every other time. Right, yeah. he fucking sliced the native chick's throat, asshole. <laughs> right, and then lied about it. Oh, she just yeah. ran off. And then, like, yeah, you know, if he would that's see, that's the thing. If people, if if people just get get over people being gay, man, it's no big deal. You know, right. people shouldn't have to hide that they're gay or will just be who they are. You know, we'd have less serial killers if Jeffrey Dahmer didn't have to hide. None of that shit would happen. You know right, and that's how he got away with it because yeah. they didn't want to know he was gay. They and even when the dude, I, you ever saw the documentary? Like the guy actually got away from Jeffrey Dahmer. They were like, "Hey, this guy's trying to kill me," and the yeah. police were just yeah. like, "Oh, there's just a lover's score. Let's go back to it." Yeah, know. like no, he's literally trying to eat me. You know, but fucking cops. Whatever. Yeah, <laughs> but we'll, yeah, we'll I mean, talk it, about it, that it, later on too. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's just a lot of things going on, and the ending with the. Uh, I can't remember the, the blonde chick and the blonde dude being the same person. That was spoiled for me. Oh, really? Both in the I, book. Oh, I. Oh, really? I didn't know that. I see that. I, it was well, because that same podcast I was listening to spoiled that for me also. And because Facebook, everybody's a bunch of assholes. They spoiled it for me before I even got a chance to watch the show. That's how I even oh. know uh, Lovecraft was even on the night. I looked at you know Facebook and somebody said, I told you they were the same person. I'm like, oh, shit. And I, Why are I people didn't... spoiled? I was wondering about that because when he came back to life, I'm like, "What the? F- why is he alive again?" I was right. like, "There's got to be some magic shit happening." And then it didn't. I didn't. It didn't dawn at me that his sister or whatever was pretending to be her. You know, uh, right? Pr- pretending to be him. Sorry. You right. Know. And it makes sense because she is certain things she can't do and can't go because she's a woman. But if yeah. she pretends to be a dude, she can. She can get it. She can go yep. where she wants. Uh, so how yeah. deep we want to get into this metaphor? Uh, and like I said, we want to talk about this podcast. I mean, talk about this episode because this whole episode is really a werewolf story. Okay, yeah. Transformation. As a matter of fact, yeah. there's transformation. Like even when uh, <laughs> uh, when when Ruby was pegging her boss <laughs> with, the, with the that that's the scene. That's when I was like, dude, while they were playing is- Cardi B in the background. <laughs> Holy, when she fucking, yeah, when she took the this heel, is I, that's when I was, like, oh. I was like, oh, man. Like I said, it takes a lot for me to cringe. And okay, so <laughs> finally, you have a breaking point. I didn't know if you had a breaking point, Eli. We, everything we do, you're just like, eh, you be bloody. <laughs> uh, Rambo ain't violent enough for me. Yeah. <laughs> right. Rip the dude's heart out, shoved it up his ass. Eh, this is. <laughs> but, but while that was going on, that was a werewolf. Uh, movie playing in the background they were trying to emphasize the werewolf mm-hmm. movie yeah. uh and it always bring me back because that's the thing what they were doing they were pre- everybody pretending to be something else like it was almost like that's what she was doing when she was becoming a white woman she was becoming a werewolf you know she was becoming yeah. her inner inability it also reminds me of teen wolf now a lot of people don't really pay attention to teen wolf but if you really pay attention to teen wolf teen wolf is a fucked up movie 
because the whole thing is about. <laughs> did it scare you? Is this why you the, can't watch horror movies, man? It did. That's the one part where it didn't scare me when I was. Uh, Thriller fucked me up for life. <laughs> oh, oh no! Just hey, just a little info. Teen Wolf is not a horror movie. <laughs> Now you tell me. <laughs> but anyway, let's go back to Teen Wolf. Now, Teen Wolf is a fucked up movie because the whole movie is about this, this nerdy white kid that has no rhythm, no soul, anything like that, becomes a animal. What happens after he becomes an animal? He starts to dance. All of a sudden, he gets cool. He gets good at basketball. <laughs> Nobody realizes the shit that's going yeah. on. I'm not even going to spell it out for you, but I just watched that movie. You know, when I was old, I was like, what the fuck they doing? Okay, fuck this movie. Everybody oh. likes him better as the wolf, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and there's an extra in the scene where a dude whips his dick out in the back scene if you really pay attention, but I'm not gonna talk about that. So yeah. And Teen so, Wolf? Yes, Teen Wolf. It's it's there. Okay. I never just rewatch that. it. Just rewatch <laughs> it. It's in the background, it's an extra. Okay. That nobody is paying attention to until the movie came out. He's just like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think I fucked that movie up for anybody, but yeah. Let's uh anything else we want to talk about um uh, look at Lovecraft Country before we move on. Just that that where she fucks up that boss because he's an ass. Remember, he was trying to rape the black he, woman. Right, the black chick, yeah. right, and then was gonna fire her afterwards. Yeah. And then because he she fu- wouldn't do it. Yeah, and I thought that was like it was a it was a cool revenge scene, but when she like took the the heel and shoved it in his ass, I was like, oh. Oh man, <laughs> and they kept going like it, <laughs> right? <laughs> that was I think at first, it, it, at first, it was something like he was into it at first. They were like, Okay, stop, stop, I'm not into this. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, it, it was, it was, that was brutal. That was, that was metal as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it gets the E last stand for approval. Okay, <laughs> oh man, let's go, let's go to the next one, something a little bit less fucked up. So, yeah, let's talk about the candy man. The Candyman can. Oh, so the can- man. Yeah. Yeah. Man. So the Candyman got delayed. Oh, uh, now and the reason I call this Eli the tenant effect. We knew oh, yeah? this was going to happen. We knew this was going to happen because the thing is that we knew that if tenant got fucked up, well, if it came out and it bombed, which it's bombing right now, it, it just flat out is bombing. Uh, if it bombed, it was going to push everything else back because everybody else is scared. Everybody just knew tenant was going to be this big tempo movie. Everybody's going to see it's a Chris Nolan movie. And nobody cares. Iron Man 2000. Why do I keep calling you Iron Man 2000? You're not. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is hardcore, you know. Uh, so everything got pushed back because Tenant is bombing. So that means Wonder Woman got pushed back to who know who fuck knows when. I think Christmas, but I think it got pushed back even past then. Uh, Candyman got pushed back. What else got pushed yeah, back? Yeah, that was supposed to come out soon because we're go- we're going into horror movie season, man. I was looking right. forward to that and the new Halloween and. And now everything's everybody, scared. everybody's yeah. scared. We we're living yeah. a horror movie right now. People are like, now nah, we don't need to go to the movies to see that shit. Yeah, twenty twenty is a living horror movie right now. So yeah, everything's getting pushed back because Tenant, you know, is hurting. So of course, Candyman can pushed back because if Tenant is hurting, you know, a genre movie like Candyman, you know, it's gonna hurt. So everybody's scared right now. We don't know. We might not get another movie till twenty twenty one. We don't know. Just on demand, damn it, fuck it. While we're like, give us something to do. Like I don't give a shit. But is yeah. demand working? And that's the thing. We don't know if demand is working or not because Mulan dropped the demand uh, uh, on demand. But since Disney has the numbers, they won't reveal the numbers. We don't know what it's doing. All we know is that it flopped in fucking China. China fucking hates that movie. They boycotted it. Uh, well, they because, were boycotted because of the the, 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 the the protests and stuff. Oh, it got worse. It got worse. Yeah. At yeah. first, okay, because, yes, yeah, she's a yeah. Mulan actress is pro, pro, pro police brutality. But it's even worse. And so is Don, that, yeah, and so is Donnie Yen. Because remember, they did that with Ip Man. Donnie Yen is also yeah. yeah remember when I when I was talking about Ip Man four, the new Ip Man. I movie? can't cancel Donnie Yen, Eli. I'm sorry, I, I can't. I can't <laughs> do it. That. You, they, you're they, asking too much of me. Yeah, they they boycotted the new Ip Man movie to the point where Star Wars did better at the box office than Ip Man. And, and they Star fucking Wars, hate Star Wars. Every, Star Wars don't mean shit in, in China. Right, because they don't have that nostalgia factor like we did. Yeah. But 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 here's the thing, it gets worse because not only are they pro police brutality, they filmed the movie at a concentration camp in China. So it's like when they when that news got out, they were like, really, man, fuck this movie. Fucking Disney. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shit. It's a good thing we're not talking about the 
boys this week. So <laughs> okay, we, we'll, we'll, I'm sorry if anybody can't even talk, hear us talk about the boys. We not because I didn't see it, but we'll we'll get to it eventually. Uh, hold on before we move on. Let's go to the callers. Iron yeah. Man, what you got for me? Pro call yeah. actor one. Yeah. Exactly, that's what's going on over there. So I don't know. Disney trying to dip their water, and that's what Disney fucked up because China is their is their cash cow. They don't care about us. They care about China. But caring so much about China may have fucked them up. They may have just kept making just bullshit movies and just trying to eat it up. But they trying to cater to China. That's how they got fucked up. So they learned the lesson. Nah. I don't know how this going to hurt Disney. I don't know if people are going to be so pissed that Disney going to be like, China's going to be like, fuck every Disney movie that comes out. You know, because they if China says fuck Disney, Disney is fucked. Basically, I don't I feel yeah. like that's a rhyme. I just want to see Candyman, damn it. It's not a Disney movie, so it's fine. <laughs> and Halloween and all this shit. And- oh, segue. What about this movie? Boom. Oh, Doom. Yeah. So it's by Will Alone, I set my mind in motion. I don't know what any of that means. I, here's the, I've never I've never seen the first movie. I have never oh, really? read the book. I don't I just know it's a movie about sand. That's all I know. I know nothing else about this movie. And apparently it has some kind of uh, giant space anus in the movie. That's all I know. So, yeah. Yeah, that's a worm, dude. <laughs> is it? I'm, I'm sorry. That's what I That's what I saw. Uh, that, Goma, that, was like, Goma was like, that, you see all those teeth on that asshole? What kind of asshole? I, didn't see, I don't see teeth. I see asshole hairs. hairs. That's, that's what hair? I see. I see hair. That's what I see. So, that looks creepy. Like, I mean, re- that, that looks more, more like a parasite. Well, I guess that's a worm, too. But like, you know, like a, like a, like a spore than a worm, you know? I guess I just yeah. honestly, Eli, I, I know I'm, I'm going to let you talk about this trailer. I saw this trailer and I was like bored out my mind. It looked pretty. <laughs> it looked gorgeous. But is this the same guy that made Blade Runner, isn't it? Blade Runner 2049, whatever. It I think is, it's the same it, guy. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the, it's the same guy, Vinny, which is Vinny, also Vinny, hey, Vinny that Vinny guy or whatever. Yeah. That guy, which is also a pretty boring movie. You know, it, it looked, is. Yeah. Yeah. So I saw this. And I was just like, mm, OK, <clears> let's go. Cool. But when that Space Angels came out, I was like, what the fuck? Okay, now you have my attention. You know, yeah, so that's a big one, dude. You say it's a, okay. Now I'm, not exci- now I'm not as excited. Now want, I'm not as excited. Anymore. Big giant assholes. <laughs> yes, that had me excited. <laughs> Saying where am I? Like eh, okay, <laughs> but but tell me, Eli, why should I be excited about Dune? Well, Dune was a novel written back in the '60s. One of the first epic sci-fi novels. Uh, yes, two thousand man reborn might explain it better, <laughs> but um, but it, it's it it's has influenced every facet of sci fi and fantasy from you know the sixties. It predates Star Wars. It predates Star Trek. You know, as far as um, you know, teleporting, teleportation, the spice is a it expands the mind and allows allows you to teleport through space. So basically, it's it's a uh, it's a space, you know, fantasy tale about kingdoms fighting over the spice. The spice is a uh, it's this um, drug that, like I said, allows space travel. That, so and that's in Star Wars, right? Yeah, it it allows. Yeah. It's like the Force. I guess it's like the Force in a no, way. No, I mean no. They have a drug called spice in there. Like so that's what Han Solo the spice was doing. He was, running, of he was yes. running spice, right? Yeah. Yeah, the spice so, mines okay. of Kessel. Okay, yeah. now you're talking my language. You like break this down so I can understand. Yeah. <laughs> so the spice it expands your life. It, it makes people live longer. It makes. But but the main reason it allows space travel. It allows people to teleport through space. Um, and the spice is only found on this one planet, Arrakis or Dune. And they're all these kingdoms Wait, are fighting. That thing you fi- just said. That thing you just said. Arrakis. Arrakis. Okay. Arrakis. Planet. Arrakis. Arrakis. That was in one of those X Men books, like the new Hickman shit. Okay. I think Arrakis is that other island from Krakoa. Like they're whatever. Okay. We'll talk about it later. Okay. Yeah, Arrakis, aka Dune. Um, Dune okay. is this desert planet. It's the only planet that has the spice. And it's run, it's like overrun with these giant sandworms. And it's a, it, they place, basically go there and mine the spice. And these kingdoms are fighting for control. Now on Arrakis or Dune, there's these, this native indigenous population called the Fremen who have prophesied that a chosen one is to come and lead them to freedom. Uh, another chosen one story. Okay. Yeah, 
So remember, this predates Star Wars. It predates Star Trek and all the shit that we. Yes, the the one, <laughs> the, <laughs> right. the savior. You know, you know, <laughs> the savior tale, the prophecy, and all that shit. So, mm -hmm. because basically the you know it's basically the the framing are are fighting for their planet, for their home territory, because the government's coming in and trying to steal their natural resource. So they prophesize that this son, his name is Paul. He's uh, the son of one of the dukes of one of the kingdoms. He ends up leading them to freedom and stuff. And that's basically war happens and all this shit. And it's uh, really weird. It's, it's really weird. I was into the old movie. I saw the old movie in the theater back in okay. the day. They actually, they, somebody did a comic book. Was it Marvel or DC actually did a comic of this? Um, well, I'm talking not dark horror. I'm talking. I'm saying one of the big two actually. Did well, I mean, if you're talking about back then, it, it was going to be one of those guys anyway. So yeah. So um, I, I always meant to read the books. I should probably finally break down and read. Is, the books. is it multiple books, like a series? I think it does. It, it's 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 it, there's multiple books, but I guess this this book has the has the reputation kind of like Lord of the Rings, where. It's like almost unfilmable. There's like almost impossible to make a movie out of this, you right. know, because it's so dense and long and epic. Um, and that's why the old movie made by David Lynch, who made Blue Velvet and you know Twin Peaks, Alien Three. No, that that's <laughs> David Fincher. Oh shit! Um, okay, David okay. Lynch made yeah he made Twin Peaks and and Blue Velvet and he makes we very weird, you know, art house movies. Yeah, there are a lot of adaptions. Mm -hmm didn't catch on like the david lynch yeah sci-fi did a series i heard i never saw it in mm -hmm. the 70s it was supposed to be a far yeah Eight books. and okay. Jordor yeah jordorowski so there's a documentary called jordorowski dune who he's a filmmaker he he made art and he also now he writes comic books because his movies were so weird that he couldn't get any you know uh budgets no no studio would back his movie ideas so he ended up writing comics for like heavy metal and and mobius like did his comics and stuff and he was going to make Dune back in the 70s. And, um, of course, it never got made because it was just too wild and way over budget. But Dan O'Bannon, who was the writer of the original Alien script, he was working on Dune with uh, Jodorowsky. And, that's, and they were going to use H.R. Giger to design some of the some The of same the guy that did stuff. the Alien the the same, design. Right, yeah, yeah, the Alien designer. So when Dune finally fell apart, and they decided, and Dan O'Bannon started making Alien. He was like, "Oh, I got the perfect guy that will design the Alien creature." So, Jodorowsky's Dune never got made, but that production book that he had floated around Hollywood for years. And they're saying that's probably what influenced George Lucas when he uh, made. I mean, Star Wars. Tatooine. It sounds like it's very Tatooine reminiscent is of that. basically yeah. Arrakis or Dune. Yeah. So, okay. Dune. Not only the story, the book series influenced science fiction storytelling, but Jodorowsky's attempt at making the movie sort of influenced so many other other movies and stuff. In fact, The Last Jedi, that opening shot of The Last Jedi where they go with it, like the camera zooms in through all the space wreckage down to the planet, that was yeah. Jodorowsky's first opening shot to his Dune movie. Where you would like go through space wreckage. It's like a long zoom in through space and stuff. So, like I said, it's this big influential space saga, and um, and yeah, it's it's a lot. It's part of pop culture. You know, so many. There's a band. There's a metal band called Shy Halud. <laughs> Iron Maiden wrote a song about Dune called To Tame a Land. That re all the lyrics are about it. So yeah, it's 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 in the culture. It's in geek culture. Okay, you know, even if we don't know it, it's kind of like if you don't know it, yeah. Okay, yeah. All, right, all right, so you you pique my interest. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and, I'll and go back and look out, at the trailer again. And check out the old movie. Um, I I I think I'll finally probably break down and read. I've been meaning to read the books all my life, and I never did. So mm -hmm. I'll probably that, finally give you excuse to yeah, do it. So you know, yeah, find the audio book or something. <laughs> yeah. All right. So watching the trailer, did you see elements of like, okay, I recognize that, I recognize that, or? Oh yeah. Well, Paul Muadi, yeah, the Freeman and um, the 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 Gam Jabbar, where he puts his hand inside the box. That's the mm -hmm. fear test. So yeah, that that those those nuns, they're like psychic nuns, and they mm -hmm. they're trying to stop Paul from becoming the the savior and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. 
Uh, Jason Momoa, I believe, is Duncan Idaho. So spoilers, he's gonna die. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Dune movie yeah. will be two parts apparently. Hopefully, it's a win, and they get into mainstreams without. Yeah, and that's the thing. It is. It is one of these epic, like right. Lord of the Rings. Like, there's no way one movie can do it justice. You know. So. So hey, you got a franchise. That's how people want anyway. A franchise. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, can we move on to the next part? Sure. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the, the video game section. So the video game section, let me start off where are we right now with the video game section. Uh oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The Xbox. So the Xbox has released their um uh, released their pricing. They did it by accident, but they still did it. So let me see. The, where th- the thrifty word? box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Xbox X series or whatever you want to call it. So yeah, so basically what's going on with that? Right, here we go. Like everything to be in its pristine order uh base was going on right now see the thing is they didn't even want to release it at first uh it was actually leaked it was leaked by somebody else and then once it got leaked and ign caught on then GameSpot caught on all these you know video game places caught on so they just said "Fuck it let's just release and just say what it is so here's what's going on with the xbox one x oh no the xbox series x and this i can't remember what the other one's called anyway anyways a bunch of xbox shit coming out the price, Eli. Do you know the price yet? Uh, one of them's like three hundred. I know. Yes, one of uh, the lower end one is two ninety nine. I'm gonna tell you the between the lower end one and the higher one. They got two different versions coming out. The lower end one is gonna be two ninety nine. It is digital only. It is there is no disc tray in there, so you can't. If you get that one, you have to download your games to get that one. Oh. Also, the storage space is half, so it's five hundred twelve gigabytes solid state hard drive on that one. So you get half the hard drive on that one. You will on the other so one. Oh, what's the point? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's cheap it's cheap it's that's cheap. what you get it for <laughs> but then you got you got no storage space and you can't fucking put a dead game in <laughs> exactly the games are so much bigger right now you can't even put a everybody put time you put two or three games in there boom your hard drive's gone how much how much for a hard drive an extra external hard drive for that uh, extra hundred dollars you know so you can just buy a whole if it's like the regular xbox you can just buy just a random standard uh external hard drive to plug it in you're good to go you know so that's so that four, one. So, so basically $400 if you really want. $400 you really want it, yeah. So the higher end one is $500, $499. Uh, it does have a disk tray on it. Uh, it has a, a terabyte of storage. So that's 1,000 gigabytes. So it's twice as high as the other one. Uh, it's also going to be the graphics card is a little bit better on that one. Where the other one can say it's supposed to do 4K, this is supposed to be able to do 8K. So it's supposed to be a more powerful one. So that's a pretty good one right there. Uh, honestly, one terabyte, even that is still not enough storage space. So no matter what Xbox you get, you're going to have to get another hard drive space anyway. Because these games can just eat up hard drive space. But they not only released that, Eli, they released some other stuff also. Because honestly, I think Xbox don't even give a shit whether they sell these consoles or not. All they care about is the, what is the thing called? Xbox Game Pass? The Game Pass, whatever? Yeah. Okay. So they released that, and the Xbox Game Pass is going up to $15 a month. But they added more stuff into it. So it's going to do everything it did before. Uh, you got the Xbox Game Pass where you get games for free on there. Uh, you get to play online. And like the EA Access, whatever like that, that's included in it also. So like Madden and Battlefield and all those EA games, you get that. So all that's included in that price. Now, let's say, but Xbox are even going further than that, Eli. Let's say the Xbox, both models are too expensive for you. Well, here's what you can do. You can finance it. Oh, yeah. They have financing plans for Xbox. Layaway, so yeah. lay, not layaway, you know, <laughs> layaway like Walmart. You just get the shit. And just come back whatever you want to. Uh, Big Willie, oh, what up? Willie. I had something for you, Willie, but I forgot. I have for you next episode. <laughs> <Have some price laughs> for you. All right. So what's going on with that one? If you want to finance it, basically how you finance. I looked at the uh, notes real quick. Uh, I hate to just pull some bullshit out my ass, but I'm going to just say it real quick. Fuck it. I'm going to pull some bullshit out my ass. Uh, I think it's twenty four ninety nine a month to finance it. I don't know. I, I think what is twenty five dollars for? Is that? I think that may be a, a year. So maybe one year for the lower end one, and two or three years for the higher end one. But anyway, you can finance it. Now, how good your credit score has to be? I don't know. How good your your debt to income ratio has to be with all this stuff? I don't. I don't know if they check all this shit or not anyway. And if you miss a payment, then what happens? They shut it off. Oh, they something? will kick your fucking door in, man. <laughs> I think they will. I think they will cut shit off because I think you. I think that one. That's the thing. 
I think these Xboxes have to be online at all times. They tried to pull this bullshit with the last Xbox. And we said, no, give me the fucking PlayStation. And that's why Xbox so fucked up. But I think they're going to pull that bullshit on us this year, Eli. I think they're going to do that. So, tiny assholes. Are, are Xboxes made better now? Because I remember back in the day, like the 360s were like disposable. The Red Ring of Death. I, okay. I, I bought like two or three of those motherfuckers because they kept. You bought them. them. You bought them the first year they came out, didn't you? Uh, I don't. It, it, yeah, I had them yeah, a while. Yeah. Yep. And my you, son had you, you multiple ones too. Yeah. You fucked up. You <laughs> fucked up. You never buy. And that's the thing. You never buy a system the first year it comes out because they will get fucked up. Iron Man, what you got for me? New sexy size Xbox would take a lot of money. And this thing, it is sexy. That's the, that's the thing about that one. That's the thing about these Xbox. They use like some ugly pieces of shit, but this one does look nice. It's small. You just put it places and stuff like that. So it's cool, but here's the thing. PlayStation was waiting for Xbox to release their prices. Because now that Xbox has done it, now it's time for phase two. PlayStation just announced their press conference coming Wednesday. So now the game is afoot. We're going to see what prices they're going to do, when they're going to come out, when they're going to be pre-ordered, and we'll find out. So as right, if you want the Xbox, uh, pre order start on the 23rd. And it goes on sale November 11th. They've already announced it. So 11, 11, 20. That's when it goes on sale. What their what game? If, Halo or something? No, Halo got pushed back. So they have no games. Oh, but but PS <laughs> has the, like the Miles Morales game. Don't right. They, they got know? Miles Morales and Ratchet and Clank and all this other bullshit coming out. So they got shit coming out. Uh, Xbox has nothing, but you got a shiny game. <laughs> oh, and here, here's the thing. Now, if you remember the Xbox One X, that really like expensive one they had last year, they discontinued that. So if you get the cheap Xbox one for three hundred dollars and you play a back compatible game on it, it's not going to do the upgraded up conversion like the Xbox one X did. It's just going to play like a regular ass Xbox. So it almost seems like even though you're throwing all these bullshit 12 gigaflops and all this shit out there, it seems like it's a worse system than the Xbox one X that just put out. But hey, three hundred dollars. Do what you want. So I'm getting either one. I'm sticking with PC anyway. So fuck it. <laughs> uh, speaking of. I play the game. Oh, yeah? Even though we talk about video games all the time, Eli, I don't really play shit. I play Street Fighter and Arkham Asylum, and that's it. <laughs> but <laughs> I play. I finally bought a new game, and it is Avengers. Uh, yeah, I played the Avengers game. And where is that thing at? I don't have it. Fuck it. Anyway, so just to give you a quick summary of what I think about the game. Eli, I know we heard some bullshit about it. Oh, and I'm playing uh, my gameplay also on it, so you can watch me run away from the Hulk while he's fucking up shit. So... Eli, people are always talking about how, you know, the game is this and the game is that. And you be getting all the kind of bad reviews from Avengers, stuff like that. I mean, I would be like, I love the game. Yeah. So for what I've played so far, it's awesome. Way better than the beta. Okay. Yeah, way better than the beta. I love it that they have you play as Camilla Khan on there. So the way the reason they have you playing as Camilla Khan, because like she's small, teenager, you know, she's your point of view character. She's the Jubilee, the Kitty Pride. She's that character. You know, mm -hmm. so when you're playing as her, you're looking at her point of view and she's watching the Avengers and the Avengers really feel like, you know, they're gods, you know, they're immortals. You really feel it. You really feel like you're small. compared to them. But when you first start, you have no powers. You're just watching them just do shit. But then as the game ramps up and go along, you start getting powers. They start getting powers. You start teaming up, stuff like that. So it's the it's the ultimate wish fulfillment that you're looking for in the game. So I'm thinking the game is awesome. I don't know where all these bullshit ass uh, criticism is coming from. Maybe I haven't got to that point yet. I don't know. Maybe the game will go to complete shit next time I do this review, you know, next week when I get further into it. You know, that's all mother nerds do is piss and moan about shit. Right. But is it one of those situations where I'm such a Marvel fan, I just eat up any shit they give me? I'm, I'm hoping it's not that. Maybe it is. I don't know. I'm, I'm biased. I am biased. I don't care. You know. So, but that's how that's the game I'm looking for right now. I'm playing, I'm enjoying it. I'm gonna keep playing it while it's going on. Well, the Hulk just took the fucking shield away from her because she thought she was stealing the shield, she thought she was breaking into uh base to steal the shield. But and that's why he was running after her. he wasn't trying to kill her, he was just like, oh. Give me the shield back. Yeah, oh, I thought okay, well, that's spoiler. So he wasn't being an asshole, he was just like, Give me my okay. shit back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so the game, like the storyline is awesome. It's just really I'm I'm playing more than anything else for the circuit. I want to see how the story plays out because it's like a damn movie, you know. Uh, PC gaming, yes, yes, Big Willie, I am. What we got here? PC, PC Master Race. See, I knew I liked you, Iron Man, two thousand for reason. I know your name's not Iron Man, but I'm cursing. <laughs> <anyway. laughs> you might as well change it to 
you might want to change the Iron Man. I'm gonna give Kyle give me a shit. <laughs> so yeah, it's a lot of shit going on in the game. You progress. It's not just beat beat them up, beat them up, beat them up. They actually had like that was a sneaking mission. I got past. They got some platforming parts, so it breaks up a lot. Now, will it probably get to the point where they're talking about that bullshit? It probably will, and that's probably when I will hate the game eventually. But as of right now, I'm loving it. The story mode is awesome. Oh yeah. Like oh, before. so it isn't not like Ultimate Alliance, huh? Not, not from what I played. It's not like Ultimate Alliance. It's not like I can Ultimate see Alliance Comic Gator bitching about it. Yeah, if you're playing as Kamala, yeah. Oh, they already are. Oh, yeah. before the game even came out, like the beta, they were bitching out of. Why am I playing as Camilla Khan? She sucks. Fuck her. I'm like, yeah, man, man, just play as her, man. It's okay. But you know what? Marvel is actually being smart with this because this is a new game. They're initiated to a whole new generation, and they're establishing Camilla Khan as a brand name, just like they did Miles Morales. You know, yeah. so now when they find new come out to Camilla Khan movie or TV show or whatever the fuck they do with it, you know, they're gonna be like, hey, that's that girl from the game. You they know? got an audience, yeah. They got an audience, so people want to complain that and you know what, Eli, people want to complain the it's woke, you know, putting Camilla Khan in it. I actually like it. Remember my last episode, well, last podcast, I complained about Storm just being just a a, a white woman in a black face. You know, Camilla Khan's mm-hmm. not that, not in this movie. You look at her, she looks ethnic, she looks Middle Eastern. Even the comics. Like a white I mean, I, yeah. I was reading Miss Marvel for a while, and because was it G. Jilla Wilson is actually Muslim? Yeah. That, like I said, you get accurate writers. You get that. She's a white woman, though. I, I'm not. I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah, but you know, you still got that <laughs> that the the culture. You know what I mean? You got that yeah. sense of the. You know, she is a practicing Muslim. And you got that sense of the culture with through Kamala Khan. So right, you you have to understand the culture in order to write that. I I, I get you with that. Like you yeah. know, uh, also Gigi Gigi the Whistle is a woman, so of course you're gonna write it from she's writing a girl where you get like I don't know, Brian Michael Bendis, you know, <laughs> writing <laughs> for a woman or some shit, you know, like that, or you know. So it, Miles Morales, yeah. <laughs> <right>. <laughs> what would a teenage black kid do, you know, from this forty Jew, uh, white Jewish man? Okay, yeah. So yeah, you understand that. So. I'm fine with it. I'm, I'm loving what they are with Camilla Khan. I hate her in the beta because they just throw you into it. But the way they ramped her up and made you understand who she is, she's us. She's a comic book nerd. You go in her room, she got nothing but just comic book shit all over the place. She's wearing a Miss Marvel shirt. And she goes on and, and teams up with superheroes. It's, it's wish fulfillment. That's how she was in the comics. Yeah, it's, it's a power fantasy. I mean, like I said, this is, this is a genius idea. And they're gonna get people into this character, so Marvel has another character that they can, you know, bank money, you know, make money off of, you yeah. know. But the comic gators do hate her, I know, but fuck them. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, let me say, we can move on to the next part of, part of the podcast. Sure. Okay, so we're about to jump into the shit. So, like I said, this is comic books where we do comic book comic book bullies where we talk about the comic books. You're gonna jump into it, and the first book is I'm gonna let you start off, Eli. And we're going to jump into Green Lantern Season 2, Number 7. I believe it's number 9, but okay. Um, is it? Oh, fuck it. Uh, is it the one where oh, he's no, like, number Snow, you're right. It's okay. Number seven. Is the one where he's looking like Green Jesus? Uh, Yeah, yeah. Fucking Grant Morrison. He's, he's, like, he's, like a, he's like Strider from Lord of the Rings, though. <laughs> um, Is Big Willie still here? He might know. Hey, Big I- Willie, if you read Green Lantern, Number 7... Tell us what was it about? <laughs> yeah, re- they're not making a no. I hope they don't do that bullshit. Uh, Riri being War Machine's niece, they might. I hope they're smarter than that. But yeah, let's talk about uh, Green Jesus. Okay, so Green Lantern, written by Grant Morrison. Here we go with the mind fuck. Yeah. Um. So basically, there's a bunch of heroes. Uh. From and I'm thinking these heroes probably existed in some random books back before I was ever born, so that's why they're here. Can, uh, can you throw out like one name that I'm? I might uh, know? Uh, let's see. What, what were they called? The the what, they had like Super Force or something. Was that what they were called? Is this it? Some funky ass space shit. Yep. Yeah, yeah so Willie will know. Willie will know. <laughs> Willie, big Willie will know. <laughs> Oops, Wait, who crap. is this? Kristen Howard, check out Kickstarter Mutant Football League One. Oh, we sure will, Kristen Howard. Thank, thanks for listening. If you are, oh crap. <laughs> yeah, weird space shit happened. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the end. And then, and then, like, and then, yeah, and then, 
uh yeah how like goes to like there's something about antimatter and shit and yeah i don't know i it's it's full of weird characters that i never heard of and and i'm sure that probably exists because it's grant morrison so he's probably making all these references to it's it's from somewhere you yeah, don't bullshit it, it, out of that. Yeah, it's from yeah. somewhere so it's basically all that Green Jesus shit. Giving paradise. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, but that's not a bad thing. <laughs> I actually like that. It's it like it was a, it was a slow week. Not a lot of books came out that yeah, I. Really it was cared a lot about. of shit. I'm sorry. This is gonna be a slog for people coming to listen yeah. to the actual comic book part. This is a yeah. slog. But stay, I, bear with us. Stay with us as much as you can. You know. Yeah, and what I, and what I remember is, uh, you know, I thought right. Am I? Yeah. Weird space shit. That's what you said. <laughs> yeah. I'm not. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know hardly anybody in this book except for like Hal, you know. <laughs> <laughs> He's just there. Wait a second. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Um, get my damn digital man. You got to go back and forth on the digital shit. The future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, three out of five. The art, Liam Sharp's art is really cool. And I only oh, read. So he's still drawing it. Okay, cool. I, I haven't read it. In a, like I, I, I was kind of behind, so I kind of was like, ah, eh, there's nothing else to read. I'll read the new Green Lantern, and I didn't really know what was going on. So that's just it's, it's like episode of Lost. You can't get behind on Grant yeah, Morrison. You know, so. you, you, you're gonna be fucked. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh well. Yeah. Oh, rate it whatever you can. I, at least three out of five. Like the art's cool. <laughs> the, the art is cool. really cool. <laughs> it is so. Yeah, because Grant Morrison would throw in that bullshit, the super bleed, and like, what, 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 what the fuck is that? No, you're just supposed to yeah. know. <laughs> it turns out the bleed is actually a comic book term. It's between the panels of each panel. Is that space in between? That's the bleed. I didn't know that shit. So when he was right, so he's like being meta, physical. Oh, I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, fuck. Anyway. it's just yeah, like weird antimatter and cosmic grails and shit and you know we, we need to know whatever drugs he's taking that way we'll yeah. know what it takes <laughs> we can read his shit you know anyway yeah. next book let's do some stuff you know what we haven't done in a while uh we haven't done a superman book like we certainly have not <laughs> we have not <laughs> now if anybody can't listen for uh what's that shit empire fallout we're not doing it that crisis on whatever the fuck don't care dark metal whatever shit don't care well, I want to keep it easy, simple, easy, breezy. What you got from Iron Man? Big brain is silver age, brain Morrison. Hey, he's that guy. All right, so this book, what the fuck's going on with this? This is the 25th issue of, of Brian Michael Bendis. Oh, he's also said that his issues in December are going to be the last issues he do. So he's going to hang on to there. So, yeah, what do we got? So, yeah, I'm going to just run through this book as fast as possible. Basically going on is another reenactment of Krypton getting destroyed and this race of people called the sindar the simar or whatever i don't know what the fuck their name is the simar they realize that uh krypton's got blown up. like how did krypton get blown up what the fuck happened to krypton like planets don't just blow up for no reason and then they see like this this uh spaceship flying out of krypton right blows up they're like there's a little rocket ship flying out what the hell's going on with that where's it going that rocket ship headed to earth why is it going to earth uh we don't know and then they realize that oh because if a kryptonian goes to uh any planet with a yellow sun around it they basically become a god so obviously they're sending this little person in there to take over the planet to conquer earth so they can make a whole bunch of race of superman if something go wrong we're gonna fuck them up while all that's going on uh we cut to superman in smallville you know he's a teenager talking to lana lane and his thing the whole book is really between clark kent and lana lane and the conversation catching up on shit whatever uh <clears throat> this evil race they're not even evil they like well superman is not doing anything he doesn't have a political agenda he's not taking on the planet he's just going around just doing silly shit like you know pulling, pulling cats out the trees and you know fighting people anytime they come over so we need to make our own superman so they have a dude that they may call superman called sindar supreme or sindar utopia i don't know what the fuck his name is anyway <laughs> yeah we we catch up with him and apparently his whole government gets killed for some reason and they right before you get to like the last dude left, he was like, You were supposed to be our Superman. And he's like, What the fuck is a Superman? And the book ends. So, yeah. Uh, here's the thing about Brian Michael Bendis. I don't hate him. 
I don't even hate a Superman run, but I will say this: he makes some shit villains. Like these bad guys, what the fuck are you doing, man? Who the fuck is Simdar? Who the fuck is Rogul Czar? Run this shit by somebody, man. Don't just make this shit and think it's a good idea. Make something. Oh, yeah, market. whatever happened to Rog Rogul Czar? Who knows? It's <laughs> <laughs> he just popped up and then just disappeared. And that's it. <clears throat> yes, yes, he has been in there. As bad as say it is, I don't think it's bad. Now, is it great? Is it good? Yeah. But it's not bad. But this is just yeah. Like I just don't care. Like I'm I'm I'm, in, I'm indifferent about it. I'm indifferent about his Superman run. I don't hate it like everybody else is saying it's the worst shit ever. Now I will say this: him teaming up with John Romita, that is the worst shit ever. That makes my fucking eyes bleed. I can't. That's why we haven't reviewed Superman in a while because I can't look at John Romita Jr. with Bendis crazy ass writing with these shit villains going on right now. That's just it's like a, a exercise in torture. I can't do it. So this book, uh. Three out of five. They actually have a cool artist with Ivan Rice on there, so I give it a three out of five on this one. But other than that one, if it's a slow week, I may continue the story. If not, fuck it. I don't care. Uh, shoot. I'll throw it back to you. What, what you got next? Whatever you want to do next, you can get. Um, I guess I'll do Army of Darkness. Cool. I, you know what? That was the one I thought you were going to do next. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I think that's what I, I yeah, should have started out with because I was like, I don't even know. What, I wanted you to knock out Green Lantern first because I was like, maybe it is something I want to I was even I'm telling like, you, I was like, I, I, I read Green Lantern, but I don't know what the fuck happened. I don't know what I can say. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is Death to the Army of Darkness, number four. Um, this has Ash. He's been teleported back to ancient Egypt where he's fighting the Deadites. Wait, wait, the wait. Of back? 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 Thank you. Yes. Yes, okay. it's the Necronomicon. It opens portals to different time periods and dimensions and hell and all that shit. So he his and earlier on in the story, his essence, his like spirit or whatever, broke up into different people. There's a woman Ash. There's a dog Ash, a talking dog named Dashley. There's a skeleton. There's evil little evil Ash. If you remember from the Army of Darkness movie, where his reflections came to life and there were tiny ashes running around. There's one of them, and there's somebody else. Did I say the skeleton? The dog? You said da Dashley, yeah. Yeah, okay. So anyway, yeah, they kind of split up, and there's like this team of ash, um, and they get sucked through the portal. They go back to ancient um, Egypt to uh, destroy the, the, the dead god or whatever, but they're trying to, they're trying to kill Ash because they're, you know, he's the chosen one, so they're trying to kill him. Um, and basically they're fighting like skeletons and deadites and shit. Um, each of them have sort of like these weird little adventures, you know, nightmares, nightmare scenarios. It's, it's fun. It's wacky. It's fine. It's just missing the gore, the blood, the violence, you know, that's what makes evil dead, evil dead, the formula. Right. The formula of Evil Dead is, yes, demons possess you, possess people, turn them into deadites. The only way you can kill them is through bodily dismemberment. That's why these movies are gory as fuck. And that's the formula. Sure, the movies got wacky and weird and, and sort of, you know, slapstick comedy, but they kept the formula. They kept the gore and the, and the, and the, and the you know, the splatter has always been there. And that's what I like about the, the Netflix series, or it's on Netflix now, a Ash versus the Evil Dead. Mm -hmm. It's still weird, wacky, you know, demons fighting each other in different dimensions. They even go back in time, you know? <laughs> All mm -hmm. that wacky, weird shit's there, but there's still a lot of splatter gore. And I think that's what's missing from these comics. You know, I've, is it Dynamite? Yeah, they're, they're fine. The, these comics are fine. There's yeah, because I don't think Di Dynamite doesn't. Well, no, no, Dynamite does the boys, they so they can the go boys. there. They, they, can, can, they go. can go there, and that's the thing. Me. This is rated teen. This shouldn't be rated teen. I say right. you see a couple of decapitations, but they're very quick, and you know, um, I just showcase showcase the gore. You know what I mean? Relish the relish the splatter. That's what I want. That's what I've been wanting these comics because I've read multiple. Uh, these Army of Darkness books from Dynamite, and they're all just okay. You know, they're fine. 
you know, if you're a fan, you'll appreciate them, but they're just missing that, missing that, you know, that punch, that gory, you know, the gory details mm -hmm. that, that, that the movies had, you know, what made the movie so great, you know? So I give it a three out of five. It's fine if you're a fan, but as a horror series, it's a little, it's a little light on the blood. So that's disconcerting to hear. <laughs> All right, so next book we're going to do is okay. Here's the thing: this is a remember, Noel is coming. Yeah, is this the so, wrath or whatever? Or this the is wraith? the wraith. The wraith. I, yeah, I, I almost read this, but I was this like, is ah. Web of Venom Wraith. Now, Eli, how familiar are you with with the wraith? Isn't he? I heard of him. I. I, I, I <laughs> oh, let me let me zoom in and see what. Man Reborn, I remember Army Darkness. I never read awesome. that. I never remember. Wait, that's Marvel a thing? Zombies. I never heard of that. I never read that, no. I never this heard of that. Zombies? Yeah, he said Marvel Zombies. Army Darkness versus Marvel Zombies. From the Mar Art. Well, obviously Marvel had to be a part of it if they were. Yeah, it had to be part of them, but yeah, I didn't know it was I'm, a thing. I'm going to go look that shit up right now. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, while I'm reviewing, you gotta, <laughs> let me go do something interesting. You know? <laughs> All right, so yeah, let's talk about the race. So this is a Web of Venom tie-in, uh, and it's setting up the the Null thing supposed to come in next year where Null, you know, invades the universe and shit like that. But then we're talking about we uh, Null. Let's see what else we got here. I can, I'm going to let you read that one. Yeah, it looks book. So, uh, okay. Wraith is not a new character. Uh, he may not be a popular character, but he's been around at least since probably about 15 years or like that. He was invented in the Annihilation Conquest uh, crossover, which is the same conquest that spawned the Guardians of the Galaxy team that we know of. The Guardians of the Galaxy has been around since the 60s, but the team that we know of, Rocket and Star Lord, blah, 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 so it spawned from that. They took off where Wraith was kind of like, what about me? You know, so basically what his thing is at the time, he was supposed to be like this Cree mutant gunslinger zombie whatever the fuck that rides a motorcycle and never really took off Lobo he's Lobo now I think about it yeah. okay <laughs> but never really took off so anyway what this book is about uh and I'm gonna share what's going on so the book starts off with this lady he's in this uh this Cree like prison planet because they own like a whole bunch of planets on Hollow so it's like the Cree prison planet and these crazy ass dudes they find this woman and about the raper that's how the book starts off you know well, let okay. me get Iron Man 2000 off there. Boom. Yeah, so they're about to rape this woman. Um, before they can do that, you know, out of the smoke, you know, comes this lone figure, you know, and they can hear footsteps coming out. And then when they see him, you know, he's just got his hand right there on the gunslinger and he's got all these names. I'm the nameless. I am. Oh, I got to go back. And I got these crazy ass names that he got. Uh, I am the one who walks. I am uh, the pale, right? I'm the pale one. I'm the gray writer. I am the rape. Now, I don't know who draw this, but I ain't gonna lie. This is just some some epic atmosphere. You know, I, is I it Stegman? I it's not Stegman. It's not Stegman. But I wish I could whistle. You know the the uh, the good and bad, and the ugly, oh, the uh, that. Oh, it, <laughs> they want you to get that feel. Oh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you go to it. They're like, who the hell are you? Do, do, and, do, do, you know, do. <laughs> so it's like four guys. You like on Red Dead Redemption where you like uh you know you see four guys and get rid of clock. So he ain't pulled the gun out yet. He ain't pulled the gun out the holster. He's reaching for it. He's like I count four guys, and you know the woman just like she's about to get raped and he sees them. Uh fuck. Let me just go to it because that shit. This he pulls out the gun, and they don't see the gun. They he does so fast they don't see the gun. Next thing you know, all four of his pop off. Just like that. So I thought that was pretty fucking awesome. Like, okay, he, he they know some gunslinger shit right here. This is a fucking awesome ass character. I'm thinking, you know, <laughs> but <laughs> it, it, take, it takes a turn because not only that, uh, Ray is doing something. He's actually got a whole nother mission. Uh, this was some shit back. Cause Donnie Case wrote this. Donnie Case wrote this. This is some shit from back from the guys that guys run. He did what he made a deal with Eros. Eros told him to find these things to find out where his past, where he comes from. Cause you know, he's got amnesia cause Every badass in every comic ever has amnesia, you know, so he has to find his past. It leads him to know. Apparently, that thing that he wears, the gunslinger, it's, it's a symbiote suit he wears. He, it's never been explained before. It's not a thing. This complete retcon because fuck it. Why not? Who gives a fuck about rape? Uh, no, see the shit. He like, oh, yeah, you. I completely forgot about I even made you. I made you like a long time ago. You were like a throwaway thing. So you're not even like a real symbiote. You're like a, a bullshit symbiote that I wouldn't even care about. Uh, and then Rafex, he can fight Noel. He like, fight me. Oh, before we get there, 
So people talking about doing and shit like that. Check this shit out. I, I love this panel where he finally makes it to the uh, Noah's home planet, you know, and he's walking through the sun. Oh, yeah. you know, I just, I just like that shit, man. You know, uh, but anyway, he finds no Noah's like, I don't even remember making you that suit you wearing. It was some bullshit. It's like a prototype suit I made. You act like a bullshit symbiote, like not even worthy of being a symbiote. So no, uh, rips him out of the suit. You know, just takes him out of the suit, has him butt naked, you know, and then kicks him off the planet or into some venom darkness shit or something. I don't know what happened. Anyway, he discards him. That's like, he's like some dark tower shit right there. Probably. Like Stephen King's the dark tower. Yeah. Yeah. Just the way they make no look. And so, so no think he's about to die. He's in darkness, but instead of going dark, it's a shining light comes out of nowhere and the light tells him his name and he's like, oh shit. And the name tells him Eddie Brock. You have to find Eddie Brock. So he goes to find Eddie Brock. And when he does it, you know, he teleports himself because he got this teleport that he got from Eros also. We don't know Eros is Thanos' brother. Long story. Not going to talk about a sex offender. Anyway, uh, <laughs> he teleports into New York in the middle of traffic. He's like, I got to find Eddie Brock. Eddie Brock is actually right across the street, you know, giving hot dogs to Dylan. I don't know if you've been keeping up with. Uh, I haven't read Venom in a while, but what? Dylan, I know Dylan had the same. Yeah. Dylan but Dylan knows. Him. Dylan knows. Dylan okay, knows yeah, that yeah. Eddie, Eddie's his father. You know. Yeah, okay. So anyway, he find he finds Venom. Uh, but the thing was, it was so far away when he teleported, they actually tears him apart. He's trying to tell him he's coming for you. Who's coming for me? No, not no. There is another. He's the god of light. He's the opposite of no. And after that, Ray dies. He atomized himself. He just disappears. And it is like, okay, that was. I don't know what the fuck that happened. So, yeah, so this cool ass gunslinger, ninja, zombie, mutant, alien thing just dies. Symbiote, fuck. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck him. I was all excited for that. I was like, okay, I'm about to get a Wraith book. The way the book started, I'm like, this is going to be a thing. I'm like, because they tried to make Wraith a thing back in like the early 2000s. And I was like, it, it's not working. You ain't figured out. But it's like, Donny Case figured out. Donny Case made it work and then killed the guy. Like, fuck him. So I'm like, damn. Man, that man disappointed me. Like, I didn't want to read it out of the filler Venom tie-in. I want to read like this badass gunslinging awesome alien shit. But, That's how they get you. <laughs> no, but I, I feel so ripped off of this book, man. Because the first book, hey, when, they, when I thought it was just about Wraith, and I thought it was just about him, but like, oh, it's just another no Venom tie-in. Whatever the fuck, he's a nobody. I'm like, Null is still mm. coming. No, no, Null hasn't came yet. <laughs> <laughs> but when he comes, look out. <laughs> Oh, so, bro, I'm gonna give the book a three point five out of five, man. I, I was like really excited, Eli. And then it just it's, uh, I don't know. Fuck it. Uh, yeah, I what, looked you at got? it. And I'm like, yeah. I was looking at it. I was like, should I read it? I, like I said, it was a slow week, and I was right. bored. Because honestly, I almost, I, if it was uh, anything was, else coming out, I would have read something up. But I wanted. I was like, I'm gonna try something. Like I could have done another X Men book, but I'm like, fuck them books, man. Let me try something different that I haven't tried. So, <laughs> all right. So, what else you got? Uh, I guess something is killing the children. Number cool. number ten. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, so this is James Tinian, his horror series on at, at Boom Studios. Um, I'm, I'm digging this story. This is basically about these monsters that are killing kids in the small town. Um, everybody's freaked out. They don't know what's going on. They can't, they don't believe it's monsters. They believe it's a serial killer. But there's this one girl named Erica, who shows up, and she is a monster slayer, and she's actually part of this order of monster slayers that have known about these monsters for many, many years. Um, and right now, the monsters have a, are, have, the monster babies, the nest have, a, have hatched, and the monster hatchlings are running around just killing kids indiscriminately. Um, Erica, her, she's trying to fight them, but the order, what are they called? The the I forget what the the, the, the society, the X-Men of Monster Slayers. They send a, <laughs> an emissary, one of her mentors, to like basically you know reel her in, you know, like hey, you gotta wrap this shit up, you know. But um but basically what the 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 the, the since the nests have hatched, the, the monsters are just kind of running around eating everybody. And right now the whole town is gathered at the high school gymnasium. 
because they found all the, the bodies of the kids in the monster nest. So they're, they've been identifying the kids, these missing kids and their bodies. And they're all at, they basically turned the, the high school gym into a makeshift morgue. And all the parents are lined up outside the high school. So basically the whole town is gathered outside the gym and the monsters are coming in towards them. And um, Erica is trying to get everybody inside to, uh, you know, to hide because the monsters are coming. And that's kind of where it ends, you know, to be continued. Her, um, her mentor, he goes out and tries to stop him and he gets killed, you know, um, and him wow. die. That's it. He, he gets killed. This is him. The final, the final page of him going out and trying to make a last stand and he gets killed and then it's to be continued. So again, I dig, this is just a straight up horror monster movie or monster story. And I've been, I've been digging it. So I'll give it a four out of five. Haven't lost me yet. This is number 10 so far. So, and I'm still on the book. So cool. Okay. All right. Uh, any other book you got? Um, you want me to double up and do bad mother? Yeah. Cause it can be the last one. I want to, I want to save this one for last. Okay. So I did bad mother. This is a part of that. Um, AWA. Is it, is that what they're called? AWA. AEW. Upshot. That I new comic book company with the uh, AWA. Yeah, so yeah, like a good a AWA, Bad Mother, Krista Faust and Mike Diodato Jr. And that's what's that's what I like about the art. Mike Diodato doing the art. It's really cool. This is basically the movie Taken, only with with a middle aged housewife. Her daughter has been kidnapped by um by some human traffickers and she's trying to find them she's doing an investigation the cops won't help her so she's kind of taking matters into her own hands she's basically found her daughter's uh cell phone and kind of hacked into the messages and she's following all the texts and kind of you know tracing her steps that there's some sort of organ some crime organization that is dealing in human trafficking and they have her daughter and at the end um, she finds out that the cop, the chief of police who said he couldn't really help her is in on it, is in on the human trafficking ring. So that's where it ends. Um, pretty cool. Uh, it's, it's an action movie, you know, with Mike Diodato's art. It's, it's pretty cool. So I'll give yeah, it a, he I'll had, give it a he's, he's pretty much doing money. like indie stuff now. So, yeah. So yeah, yeah, he's doing his own creator own stuff. Yeah, so cool. Which is pretty yeah, much, pretty I think, cool. well, a lot of like, like other. As soon as they get out of contract, they kind of all hit it that way anyway. You know, because why make yeah. you know another Wolverine book? You just only should make more money off of it. So, you know. all right. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. here, so we ready to ready to do this one? I think we need to. Do, I think we need to get some background detail about what, what we're about to do. Okay, so this is uh, did book this we're gonna, one first. Well, <laughs> we probably should have because we did all those other bullshit books. This we did. is a but bummer. Wanted... This book was a bummer. Well, that's why I want to save it for last because I didn't want to like kill the move for everything else. But this book is going on right now is called <laughs> Represent Number One. Now we need to get some background or back about what Represent is because you haven't heard about this book and why you haven't heard about this book actually kind of pissed me off also because uh, this is actually a DC book uh, and they should have promoted this more than what's going on. So let's give some background. Now, for those who don't know, there was this uh, guy named Chris Cooper. Uh, happened about, actually, the same around the time that George Floyd. Uh, it, was the, it was the day before George Floyd. It was the day before George Floyd, right. So yeah. he was bird watching. He was bird watching. And while he was bird watching, uh, he got an altercation, well, not an ar argument with this lady, with this white lady. And she threatened to call the cops on him because of their argument, just to shut him up. He filmed the whole thing saying that she was just going to just make up some bullshit just to say a black man threatened her so the cops would come out there and do whatever you know she didn't yeah. care she just threw this stuff around so he filmed the whole thing and got out there this really get too much noise because like i said the day after that that's when the george floyd thing happened and then all hell broke loose yeah. you know just just with society in general so let's just talk about this book what's going on right now but why is this a thing because what she didn't know is that chris cooper actually used to be an editor for marvel 
So he has comic book connections. So he decided to do is write a comic book about this. But he didn't write it for Marvel. He actually wrote it for DC. And DC actually released the book free. It's a free digital book. You just yep. get it. The name of the book is called Represent. I'm probably going to send a link in the, uh, in, you know, in the description of it so you can go get the book yourself and check it out. So basically what this book is about is uh, it starts. So basically this book is based on his situation. It's not him. It's like, you know, fictional characters, but it's playing out exactly how he did it. So the book starts off with this, you know, kid named Jewel. Jewel is going to go bird watching. He's got this uh, binoculars that was given to him by his grandfather, which all this shit happened. Just the, the name of the guy was changed. And he goes out to this undisclosed area. But we know it's Central Park. You know where he goes. Uh, Why he goes there, he's bird watching. But it, where he bird watching. And this is the fucked up part about it. He goes bird watching. This is and, sad, man. This is yeah, sad. <laughs> this is this is this is really fucked up because he goes bird watching. But he sees ghosts while he's bird watching. Because the first ghost he see is, and I had to do some research on this, I'm going to do Diallo. And I didn't know about this. Like, this is some shit. This happened back in 99. This is some real shit. Apparently, this is African exchange student that was going to uh, back to his home. Some, you know, unclothed police officers. They, like, the police officers weren't, weren't dressed up like police officers. They were dressed up, you know, in plain clothes. Plain clothes police officers thought he was like a serial rapist or like that and unloaded 41 bullets on him. This really happened. So he's seeing ghosts about that. He died. It wasn't while, him. While reaching for his ID. Yeah. While reaching for his ID, unloaded 41 bullets, 19 of the bullets hit, died. You know, he was unarmed. You know, so he he's thinking, okay, I'm I must be going crazy. This is crazy. So he goes bird watching again, sees another bird, and this one he sees, and this one fucked me up right here, Eli. He sees Brianna Taylor. Now, we keep talking about this over and over and over again for you don't, guys that don't know who Brianna Taylor is or why this is important. She was a, a lab technician. She was in her home sleeping. The police officer thought there was a drug raid in her home, but it wasn't. It was actually like down the street from her. She had nothing to do with it. They burst in. She was asleep. They shot her and killed her. Yeah. The police officer that did it have not been arrested at all. They have not been caught. That's why I keep seeing people saying, say her name, get just for yeah. Breonna Taylor. That's what this is about. This comic is talking about some shit that's really happening, that recent happened. Matter of fact, her, I think that. And her boyfriend freaked out when they busted in. He thought, well, people were busted in and he was defending right. his home because that's they, what. They yeah. had no warrant. They yeah. had no no reason to bust in because you can't just bust in the door, guns blazing, and just shoot up a place with unarmed people. You know, that's what they did. They shot a killer and they, they've not been arrested yet nothing they just you know just oh uh, well she did get the cover of vanity fair but they're doing everything except arresting people that shot her you know yeah what are we talking about let's go back to the comment okay so and this is what really fucked up happened oh uh, he goes since you know people saying get out of here go do this he goes to central park and there's a sign that says protect your wildlife dogs must be on a leash at all time meanwhile uh there is a dog running around with no leash just chasing at the birds like that. Well, they said there's signs everywhere that your dog must have a leash. This really happened. Like I said, he's not making any of this. All the thing he's changing is the names. All this shit happened. Uh, he's telling the woman named Beth. We all know her name was Karen, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's telling uh, her name. Well, I don't think her name was Beth. I think her name. Yeah, her name is Beth. And she's basically her dog is just running around. No leash. And he's basically telling him. Your dog didn't have a leash. There's signs everywhere that your dog didn't have a leash because you don't think gonna chase these birds away, you know, and it's it's causing a hazard, you know. And that's when he says, Look, if you don't put a dog a leash on that dog, I'm gonna escalate the situation. You're gonna do what? You're not gonna do anything to me. Matter of fact, how about I call the police on you right now since you want to argue with me while the dog is still running around with no leash on with it. And here's the fucked up part about it, Eli. When I re originally released the story, more people was pissed off about the dog. Then the situation about, you know, she called the police on, on a dude. Oh, because she was choking the dog. Because she was choking the dog. They were more yeah. upset about the dog than anything else. Yeah. They're like, she'd be arrested for that. Like, what? Okay, whatever. Like I said, that's where we live in. So she's like, you're yeah. threatening me. Uh, You can't do me. I'm going to call the police. And, and while she's doing that, you see the ghost of all the unarmed black people that were killed standing behind him, almost like protecting him. You know, which in his, you know. In his mind, the situation he went through, that's what was going on. So he like, and while she's just saying, you're not going to do this, you're not going to do that, he just walks off from it, just goes about his business, just ignores her. And when he looks in the sky, he sees all the unarmed black people that died turned into angels. 
because they were protecting the whole time because his story could have turned out just as bad as everybody else's story, but it didn't. Yeah. So that's the whole point he was trying to make. So then they showing like a real picture of him at the end, basically saying bird watching out of crime, you know, and I think this is a powerful story. And I think DC dropped the ball on this. They really should have got behind this. I don't know why they just dropped the free book and did no promotion on it whatsoever. That's kind of, that's kind of bad on their part. I think I heard about this through, uh, I think it was now this or something. One of them online news, uh, you know, sources dropped like a video. And right. That's how I heard about it. Right. I think yeah. I saw uh, some. Rumors but I didn't know. I didn't know it was out already until you said you were going to read it. It's like, oh, is that that book that the bird right. watcher? You know, like you got you got to look for it on Comics. Yeah. Like it's yeah. not there. Like in the free comic, you got to like look really. For it. I had to search. I because I went to free comics that week and it wasn't there. I had to like search for represent. Right. No. So, so what I'm going to do for everybody, I am going to link a free link in there. It's free. Download it. It's 16 pages. A quick read. Definitely read it because it was a powerful read. It's like, yeah, it was she, a bummer. She, yeah, it, it was a bummer. But like, hey, she picked the right one to do that. She didn't notice she picked a, you know, a comic book writer that was doing this shit. That's going to put the shit out there. Now, like I said, the big companies should have got behind us. They always talk about how woke they are and how, you know, how much they look for equality, but when shit like this happened, they just dump it and then, you know, just leave it out there. Like, they should have got behind it. This should have been pushed more than fucking Green Lantern Season 2. Yeah. You know? So, <laughs> that's my thing. Yeah. Uh, let's go to the call. Let's see what we got. Yeah, yeah. DC put... The, uh, that's that's what I'm saying, man. Like I said, I don't I don't want to say virtue signal because we do it too much, but I almost feel like that's what they were doing. Like, we've done our part. Like, you still have to get behind it. You still have to promote it. Yeah. And you it's... Know. it's and, and I'm sure it... He, you know, from his point of view, like right. I said, his story kind of got, you know, outshined by by what happened with the George Floyd and, and riots because it was like the day after, and and um, but he could have very well been a victim. He could have been uh, like the same story, you yeah. know. But he's and, saying, uh, like, basically in his mind, the way he's writing, writing the story is that the, the ghosts of all the unarmed black people that yeah. had gotten killed before. You know, we're watching over him. They're making sure that he wasn't going to be the story. But while they happened, like I said, George Floyd happened, and then, yeah, all the crazy shit happened. So yeah, this is this is a powerful story that really need to be out there. Honestly, like that's why we do this podcast. You know, we yeah. we, we don't have a, a huge footprint, but whatever we can do, we try to help as much as we can. So shit like this needs to get out there. Yeah. So did you? You, uh, haven't, you haven't seen a fuck? What's that movie called again? Damn it. I asked you if you've seen it, and you said no yet, but I, I told you it was really good. It's got the guy from uh, Hamilton. I haven't uh, seen Hamilton, so I don't know who the guy from Hamilton is. He's in it. Ah, crap. I forget. It was like free when they were, had all the the black movies for free. Remember? I'm probably um, downloaded. haven't watched it yet, but I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure I, I got it. What the fuck was it called? Uh, uh, shit. Anyway, this is what it kind of – there was some aspects of this that reminded me of that movie, too. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was it was it's powerful and it, it, it was, I was such, I was really bummed Train out. Train spotting, I, blind spotting, blind spotting, blind that's spotting. What that's what it is. is. That's yeah, that's what, what it is. is. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. That, it's a really good movie. It really surprised me. Um, but yeah, this book, like I said, it was really sad. But yeah, it was very powerful, and uh, I'm sure, you know, Mr. Cooper here, the writer, you know, probably feels. I'm sure that's this is a very cathartic book for him to write. Right. I mean, because that's the thing, like you have to know the story of this book when you write it, let you know, like, damn, this is like basically the way he told the story. Like, I remember him telling it is the same way this comic played out. So like, damn, this is like this is a, a really good story that he put together in, in his real life. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, anything else we got to add to it or we're we good or uh, I'm pretty much booked out. I didn't we we got no, but this this is the this is the shit week. Honestly, this is my favorite book of the week. But I didn't want to just do just this book. I wanted to <laughs> do some other stuff too. Uh, like I said, we'll come back next week, and hopefully, it'll be some some all kind of Batman Joker Wars and some other shit coming out. It'll be some other stuff coming out. We'll see how it goes. Uh, and yeah, I think we got. You know what? I'm gonna end the song with that Frank Ocean song, Eli. Okay. Now we might get canceled. You know, oh, coming with bullets and making me gay. No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. You were gay but, to begin with, so right. <laughs> don't blame, don't put that on us. Yeah, don't it ain't you, our fault. <laughs> right. Uh, until then, this is Leroy. This is Eli. We talk to you guys next week. Same bullet time, same bullet channel. Okay, cool.